Great. So uh, we are going to go and call up any logic. Um, I'll call it up from scratch um, so you'll know what it looks like. But I'd also invite you to go to the Canvas site for the class. Um, and I will show this to you here. And I'd like you to download, if you want to follow along, download a uh, a model from there. Oh, gosh. OK. Um, OK. Uh, So I'll just show people where it is on Canvas. Yes, 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 OK. Um, OK, so we're going to go to 394 here. And if you scroll down, there's an area whoops, okay, um, called Models Discussed in Class. And if you click on this model, you should be able to get to, to this screen. And you click on it again, it should go download it, OK? Um, and by downloading that model, we're going to be able to open it in any model. So that's the first thing that I did. So I went to Canvas site, went down to models discussed in class, and downloaded the model. Okay. Next, I'm going to call up any logic. Okay. And the model sitting on my computer. But first, we want to get the platform up. Any logic is a modeling and simulation platform that supports three major modeling paradigms. Okay. Uh, so, system dynamics, agent based modeling, and discrete event simulation. Great. Uh, okay. Uh, so, when you come up, you may get this splash screen like this. Okay. Um, if you're coming up and it for the first time, um, there's lots of good things to do here. I particularly highlight the example models area to which we've contributed. Uh, but we're going to minimize this. Now, this environment may remind some of the CS students here of an environment that you've been coming in for. Does anyone? Does this remind anyone just then of looking at the field of anything? It's an IDE, right? And there's a specific IDE, it begins with E. Yeah, it's Eclipse. It's an Eclipse based framework. That's right. So um, it's that era. Um, uh, for those in, in CS, um, you, you may remember, and you can kind of drag drag these windows along. There'll be a set of windows here you can you can uh, open up. We'll make most use of the projects, the properties, and the palette here, um, as well as a canvas that we'll be opening. But I do want to point out that you can reconfigure this if you see fit. By double-clicking on a given window, you can make it full screen. And double-clicking again, it becomes no longer full screen. Okay? And if a window disappears, like if the properties window disappears, you can come get it back here. Okay, now seven. Um, so this is going to be our environment for build them all. And we're going to build them in three different traditions and hybrids. Uh, there. Yes, your name? Mark. Uh, which section on the canvas? So, so were you talking about the example models? The example models were on the splash screen that first came up. It was on this screen here um here um and so when this first came up uh it was under example models here okay okay sure um uh and and you can you could find uh, probably close to 100 models here okay so um having opened this up i'm going to do file open and we will go get the model that we downloaded okay Great. So um, I am going to just point out that when we load a model, uh, we have uh, a set of 
characteristics of this model that are shown in several different areas of this group. So first of all, over in the projects area, you have a hierarchical view of said model. Um, so uh, we have, in this case, um, an overall environment called Maine. That's sort of the overall um, uh, general environment in which uh, agents are present. We have uh, a person um, agent. Um, and uh, this person agent is defining a theory of personhood. So if you double click on it, you'll see in this canvas in the middle, a characterization of a, of a theory of personhood. Now this is a singularly simplistic, stylized um, theory of personhood, but it involves each person having some states in which they can be located. Anyone recognize this construct? Do those from CS background? What is, what is this thing that's out there? It's a what? You don't know. UML stage. That's right. That's right. And you can see that this delineates for a given person with respect to the concern of this particular state chart, and you can have more than one for a given person, a person can either be susceptible in a susceptible state, they can either be in a situation where they're susceptible or they're infectious, that is able, they're infected and able to spread the infection or they're recovered, okay? Um, and, uh, they proceed from between those states via transitions, which are shown with these lines here, one for infection, one for recovery. And, and then there's an additional one we'll, we'll be getting to that represents immunization um, and is, is a little bit more distal to our purpose. Okay. Um, now, beyond that, they're associated with a color. And if you go look in the upper right, you may notice that they actually have a a certain appearance, and there's actually a small uh, sort of rectangle that they they form. And if I went and I zoomed in, I could go I could go see that in greater detail. Okay, um, great. Now there's some other characteristics um, uh, that that are routinely used, but here we're really making use of a bare minimum. A given person is in one of these three states. But you'll notice that these transitions have some icons associated with them. And those, those icons are indicative of the rules that govern those transitions. We talk about the transitions being action. They change the state of an agent. They, they make a change in the underlying situation of the This one from susceptible to infected is called um, infected, okay? Um, and, uh, and to infect John. And that represents the process or the occurrence of an infection. And this one from infectious to recovery, to recovered represents recovery. But you notice they have different icons. So the recovery one says that it occurs at a certain rate, ladies and gentlemen. And the rate is given by one divided by the average illness duration. We'll find out why that is um, later, but uh, it's it's something which will yield them to be in the state an average of time as given by this average illness duration in Maine. Okay. Um, meanwhile, this one for infection is what's called a message transition. This represents a situation where an agent is going to receive some sort of stimulus or contact or, or impact of another agent, influence from another agent in the form of a, guess what? Begins with M. Message in the form of message. That's right. Yeah. Um, and that is what is going to lead them unconditional in this case. Um, it's going to leave them susceptible to infections. Okay. Um, and there'll be something similar for immunons. 
Okay, so this is a theory at an individual level involving um, the progression of infection, but there's more than that, ladies and gentlemen. There's more than that. Um, so uh, beyond this, uh, we have some internal transition that's in place within infectious. And you'll notice if you click on that, while they're in this infectious state, there's some process being undertaken, some change over time being undertaken. In this case, they send infection to random neighbors, okay? Great. Um, so uh, the infection uh, can spread when a given person, given agent in this model is infectious, they can spread infection to others. They will send it to a neighbor, which turns out to be a neighbor in space, okay? Someone located nearby them, and in fact, right next to them visually. Um, and this occurs with a certain contact rate and considering a, a certain infection probability for reasons we won't get into. So this is a theory of personhood. This is a model, and models are useful for several reasons. Just model by itself, even if we don't simulate, have uses. What, what's the use of a model, even if we don't simulate? Simulation adds a lot, but I would argue models are really useful without a simulation. What can we do with models that don't simulate? Yes, that was the great one. That's true. It helps to take sort of a amorphous idea out of our head and describe it in a critical way, a way that's quite particular to fit it. And that's that beautiful. It's structured for me. What's another piece? Yes, name? So it allows us by taking it out of our head and putting it in front of people, someone might say, well, wait a minute, this, this infection is a long waiting period. It's a long period where people are infected, but not yet in fact shots. You're not representing that. Or, or maybe they'll say, well, yeah, that's that's true in a simple way, but people get a lot more infectious the longer they're infectious. Maybe it's like TB, and over time they can develop cavitary TB where they can really spread it hugely. Or maybe someone will say, well, wait, how are you accounting for asymptomatic people? And are you going to distinguish them from symptomatic? The symptomatic people, you know, others will recognize for asymptomatic they won't, but asymptomatic kind of be less infection. So, so anyway, just take it out of our head. We'll allow people to critique it. And more to the point, to advance, I mean, to advance it, right? To to refine our theories. That's the, how we need to collect their refinements of theories. We put them out there, we have discussion around them, we contrast our perspectives, our ideas on them, we develop alternative theories, we we um, elaborate them, and and we we um, use that to kind of advance our thinking. So part of the model has many purposes. So I'm just bringing people together to talk about this and to, to, to communicate their different understanding is useful. But what's really useful um, in simulation is the ability to enact this. So we can take this model um, and we can ask what are its logical consequences over time? So we're gonna have to go rather quick on this, but let's go right click on simulation and click run, okay? Okay, um, so this is a model which describes the spread, and you can think of it as the spread of pathogen, but you could think of it as the spread of ideas or knowledge or uh, attitudes or beliefs, um, spread of, you know, um, conspiracy theories or rumors uh, over time too. Okay, so we're going to run this, and each of these places in this space is going to be a certain person. Okay, and there's going to be one that starts infective at the beginning time. Now, what do you think the consequences of this theory will be in terms of, of spread? Yes, uh, so Mark. Okay. Okay, so 
So it'll sort of maybe plateau in terms of the number of people that are infected. Some people will be getting infected, some people will be recovering. Okay, so, so that's one idea will grow initially and then kind of plateau in terms of number. Other ideas. Yeah, you the name again? Mushido. Thank you. It is so you don't Okay, so eventually everyone will recover. Um, um, that's true. Yeah, we can see how quickly it spreads. That's good. Uh, and, uh, Abby. Yeah, um, so the number of points is probably will not necessarily be uh, okay. In this model, are there deaths yet, though? So, in general, we will have deaths in the world, but this model is so positive. It doesn't mean it all has. Um, so, good idea in general, but, but this model is in such a tight scope, such a limited scope. You don't know. So, uh, I like how you brought that up. Okay, so let's. But you know we're we're exploring some ideas, but hopefully we can get this a lot quicker than we are at simulating the at the implications of this. So I'd invite you to run. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to run this model, and we're going to see initially um, someone infected uh, here and. You'll notice it's kind of revving up here. Um, yellow is susceptible. So most people are starting susceptible, but here's where the infection started. Now down here, you see some controls. By pressing this one, you can slow down the spread. By pressing this one, you can speed up the spread. What's going on? Can anyone say what's happening here? Why are we seeing a circle and why, why is there a circle of kind of red and and why is there gray, more gray in the middle, but some red? What's what's going on, Patrick? There's not any sense to the neighbor, but the neighbors uh, that's right. So so um initially there was some person somewhere towards the middle here, but in fact it patient zero, right? It started to spread out. And as it spread, um, additional people got infected. That's the red here. But over time, some of them, particularly the ones who got infected earlier, each, they have this this rate of getting of uh, getting recovered, this chance per unit time of getting recovered, and so they start to recover. So some of these people here in the center, they got infected a while back, and they're more likely to be recovered than people at the end. Why is it this kind of range shape? What, what what's causing the the range shape? Um, yes, Mark. Yeah. Um, yeah. So so there's a there's a circumference here which is is going to be most well, certainly related because of the basic geometry to the circle and the number of people in the circle and the larger number of those people that have gotten infected so far, the circumference of that. And I want to build up Mark's point. Ladies and gentlemen, we'll, we'll come back to this. I'll continue running it. You notice I paused it there. Um, but where in this model does it say there's a circle? Where where did you where did you see in here? Is, is there a circle? Does it say make a circle? Does some in somewhere in here does the is there Java code like here that says make a circle? Is there some place that says make the circle grow and have it be more red on the outside and gray on the inside? Yeah, I think it's uh yes. Okay. Okay, but I'm saying where where did this circle come from? Is that encoded in our model? Does it say make a circle and make it grow at this certain place? Uh, uh, yeah. uh, people are Good. 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 
So is the circle, is there something in this model that says let there be a circle and make it grow and make it mostly gray inside? No, those things are what? Those features, those phenomena, the surround circle, the fact that it's gray inside, it mostly red on the outside, and it's basically circular. Um, those are what features of this process? They are emergent. They're emergent features. They come, do they depend on how the infection spreads? Does, does it depend on the fact that the infection can spread? Yeah. Does it depend on that it spreads only to neighbors? Yeah. Does it depend on the fact, does the fact that it's gray in the middle depend on people being able to recover? Yes. But what we see as a pattern, as a phenomenon, can't just be reduced to any one of those things, right? There's nothing in this model that says, let there be a circle. And I want to go up to Mark's, Mark's point um, up here. I want to click and drag, and you'll notice there's actually a graph up at the top on the number of people who are infected, the number of people who are susceptible, and the number of people that are recovered. Okay. Um, what's going on in terms of the count? Anyone? What's going on? Yes. Uh, the infectious disease, that's the red. That's right. That's right. Um, so the number of recovered is going up uh, as well as, as the number of recovered. And the susceptible are what? When, why are they going down? There are less people to be infected. A lot of people have gotten infected already. Um, but that's right. Uh, so that's good. Um, remind me your name as well. Nicholas, yes, thank you. Um, so uh, I'm terrible with names, but eventually I'll get it, okay? Um, so we're gonna continue. What do you think will happen over time with this? Anyone? So, so uh, yeah, your name? Brandon, yeah. Okay. So them them match uh okay so that that's great great idea um I I'd love you pointing that forward others too yes yeah the infection rate will drop and why will it drop yes why would it why would it drop the rate at which people are getting infected here I think you mean how quickly it's growing I'm sorry. Less people that are susceptible that can be infected. Okay. And more people that are what? Recovering. Yeah. Yeah. So. Okay. So, so we're going to be running it out and this is what happens. And if I ran it a little bit more, well, it is, you'll notice that everyone is what? Is recovered. Okay. So, so that's great. Um, so, uh, ladies and gentlemen, could anyone explain what happened here towards the end? Yes, um, that's exactly right. So, so we're referring to the logistic feature of this curve. So it starts slower. Why, why is it? Why is the number of people that are getting recovered can take a little bit of time to really get up? Yes, it may be. So. Yeah, I mean, so it is just getting going and spreading in the population. So there you don't have, yeah, you're not close to herd immunity. So people are just getting going. So not too many have gotten to the point of recovery, which is, is being, yeah, you're, you're not going to be at all your herd immunity. Uh, yeah, Patrick, don't go ahead and make people. I'm sorry. Don't make There's a delay because before people get recovered,
covered, they have to be infected, right? So people aren't going to be covered immediately. Someone first has to get infected, and back then, it's only a few infectives around the original person who got infected. Right? And then it's going to start taking off. And then you're going to have more recovery, more recovery. As that circle grows, you know, there's more and more people in the internal part of that. Mark was alluding to this earlier. Who, who were infected and are now starting to recover. So this growth gang clusters the place. Again, you're running out of people who are susceptible. You're, and, and, and the number of infectives is going down here. So it's slowly, slowly getting some, some people recovering, but not many. Okay, so so that's great. That's great. I, I, um, I, I think you'll agree that the shape of these curves is also not encoded in the model, right? Nowhere in the model does it say, well, the perspectives go up fast and then increases the rate and then it's flat and then down. There's nothing in the model that says that. That is in a what property of this model? It's in into the emergent feature of this model. It comes out of an interaction of a bunch of features. Does it depend on contact? Yeah, it depends on contact. Does it depend on who they can spread it to? Yes, it depends on that. Does it depend on recovery? Yes, it depends on that. But it, it depends on this entangling of all of them, which is characteristic of these complex systems. They're, they're often entangled um, systems, and they give rise to a whole that's different than some of the parts. Okay, next, I want you to go, go to this slow recovery option. So in the regular simulation, we had a 10 day period that they were ill. Now for, we're gonna have a 50 day time that they're ill. How do you think this will affect? So they're gonna be ill for 50 days. Okay, so they're gonna be ill so so it will take longer before the recovery start really going up because they're going to stay sick not for 10 to 15 days nearly two months right okay so so let's go what's another implication How, do you think it will affect the total like the maximum number of people that are infected at once and why would it do that? Was that? Yeah, so they're going to be exposing more people over their own list. And it's going to, they're going to stick around and affect it for longer, right? So, so they're, they're not going to clear out in the recovery stage real quickly. So the number of them that are infected at any one time can be larger, yes. Yeah, so, so I think this is what Nathan was getting at. So they're infected for longer, so they may, may, may infect more people before they recover. Do you think more people will get infected overall? Um, you know, by the end of the simulation, are there going to be a lot more people who have gotten infected than in this one? Depends on what your population is. What happens with this population? How many people here got infected by the end? Basically, everyone. So it's not going to necessarily lead to a greater number that have gotten infected, but, but maybe a greater number that are infected at any one time. So let's run this, right? Let's run this out. Okay. Um, so we're going to, to see. Um, uh, see how it plays out. Is it Tyler? Okay, awesome. Okay, so I'm I'm running it out. What do you, what do you see that's a little bit different than the first time? I should have run that more slowly. You Note, know I I put it into what's called virtual mode, where, where I ran it as fast as it could. I didn't want that, so I I stopped it in virtual mode, and I'm just running it in now regular mode. So here we go. And what do you see that's different from before? What do you see that's different? Yeah, so it's a lot thicker of a 
of a um, lining uh, around this area, right? And so the number of infectives is going up, but the recoveries per Abby, Abby's theory, the Avarian theory, it's, it's it bang on, right? The, the number of recovered are, are not going up as quickly as before. Before they started really going up here uh, earlier, but now it takes longer. And the number of infectious, is it going up higher than before? Yes, yes, it's going up higher than before. And the number of susceptible is coming down even more quickly. And so you get this steeper rise and, and, and decline. But once again, we're having basically everyone recovered by the end, right? Okay, so that's good. Um, uh, now, we could ask what would happen with fast recovery but um, time is really short. And I do want to do one final thing, okay? So um, I'm gonna hand these out again, write your name on the back. Or I'm sorry, write it up at the top. Don't, don't bother, well, actually, sorry, write your name. So write your first and your last name. This is for 394. I don't like the fact that people leave right after the quiz. So this is the second quiz. Anyone here can be 100% on it. Okay, so uh, good for you to stay with us. Uh, so, John, do you want to take something down? Okay, so um, so put your name down. If you put your first and last name down, you'll get 100% of the quiz. Okay. That's all. Just hand it back. Don't worry. But um, make sure that. Oh, the other thing I wanted to do is put a uh, check mark where like all the uh, questions are on the print. Just, just put a check mark so that we know it's. Or put a two. Put two or. Yeah. Just something that indicates it's not your first. You know, put. Put part of where all the questions are on the quiz, put a two like this, a two. Okay. Just so we know it's your second time. So we don't confuse you. I don't think this is your first time you took it. You got a zero. <laughs> What's that? Yeah, if you put the two, put the two on it. Two. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So next time, ladies and gentlemen, we're gonna explore this model some more. Um, I think we'll actually, um, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll do it as a bit of homework. I'd like you for homework to, this will be a, a paper exercise. I'm gonna ask you to add a link from recovered back to susceptible with a certain rate. And I want you to examine what the consequences of that are. And we will talk about why you see that behavior. I'm also going to have you run fast recovery. And I want you to pause it ahead of time. What do you think fast recovery would lead to? How would it change the situation? And uh, people recover with kind of really quick one. And, and then you're going to see what if people lose immunity? How would that change that? Okay, and uh, I may ask you to also experiment a little bit with uh, with doing a bit of immunization. Okay, and we'll discuss the consequences next time. Okay, the people the people uh, fill that in. Make sure you put a two on it or two, and make sure make sure you put your name. And congratulations, spectacular job on the quiz. Great, great job. Enjoy engaging with you today. Uh, that's all for today. Thank you. So, let me slide you just to simplify your life so you can get out of here and we can get out before the next class. If you could hand them over with John out before I give them to me, it's going around. So, thank you. Great job. Thank you. Great job. Fantastic. Wow. What a, what a, Oh, no, maybe they can set an answer. Okay, that's all right. Thank you. Cool, cool. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you.
And um, I think, uh, I, oh, I should announce, I should announce, I have office hours now. After every day class, I have office hours, but we have to get out of this room because there's another class which meets here. So we'll be going up to my office if anyone wants to talk with me. You can only do for that. This is quiz two. Uh, yeah, thanks. Yeah, I'm here to meet you in person. Thanks. Yeah. Uh, I just, uh, next